Windows 11 launch week is here and a new operating system means a lot more to learn and a lot to wrap your head around and a lot to change on your computer should you choose to go ahead and upgrade. Just like I did back for Windows 10 when it launched about six years ago, we're covering everything you need to know about Windows 11 as a new user, especially for streamers here on the channel. We started out covering tips for streamers and now we're covering 10 things that you should do immediately after upgrading to Windows 10. We'll have a short link in the description below if you wanna learn how to upgrade for yourself and kind of skip the rollout process if you don't wanna wait. Uh, and we'll have a playlist link below as the videos continue going live. They'll all be up on Nebula by now probably, uh, covering everything that we are covering for this week as well. First and foremost, after you have upgraded, of course, make sure all of your files are intact. Make sure everything looks right, nothing appears too broken, and then check out the Getting Started button on the Start menu. This will walk you through some of the new changes, show you, you know, what new things you can do in Windows 11, what they may have changed, why it may look different than you're expecting, uh, and all of that. It gives you a nice little introduction, and I just recommend kind of running through that to get yourself a little bit familiar with it. Next up, let's go ahead and gain some control over Windows Update, because all these settings you may have set before, but they can easily reset through updates, and I want to make sure that you are in control. So go ahead and hit Start, Settings, and then go to Updates. Here, you can pause updates. You can extend that pause for up to like three weeks, I believe, if you want to just do updates on like a scheduled monthly basis or something like that. And then you can set manual control over whether or not it restarts for updates or when it restarts for updates. Uh, you can set active hours that you are typically working or using the computer that it will not restart automatically during. So I usually set mine for the hours that I'm usually in the office, things like that. And then you get control over whether it downloads while you're on data. If you have a Surface or some other you know, mobile data connected device. You get an option about notifications whenever you need reboots for updates, which is pretty cool. You can either enable that notification so that you know it's coming because nothing's worse than just thinking you're going to quickly restart your computer real quick and then it has update cycle and you have to wait longer than expected. Uh, so that's always really frustrating. So getting a notification can be beneficial for that or you can turn off the notification if you want less notifications in general. Don't need it showing up while you're working or streaming or something like that. They have a setting which you can enable which is really cool called delivery optimization which actually allows you to download your Windows updates from other PCs. So if you have a network at your home, at your office, whatever, where you have like a family PC and then your laptop and your gaming PC or something like that, or you just have multiple people with Windows computers in your home or office or whatever, you can have it to where only one of them really needs to download the update over the internet and the rest of the computers, as long as that one's powered on, will download the updates from that computer. Uh, which will be significantly faster in most cases than downloading over the internet and can save you a lot of time and wasted download time or bandwidth or if you have a data cap this could be crucial uh, to keep you from wasting that on Windows updates which is really nice. And then of course you have a couple uh, additional options here. You can enable updates for Microsoft apps like uh, Microsoft Office, Skype, things like that. This has been a setting since like Windows Vista. It's always really cool because it just helps keep you up to date. You can also check for optional updates. Now these will include what is our next step here, which is driver updates. So this will contain most of your driver updates that you need to check for, which is an important step after you upgrade operating system versions. So for example, when I updated my laptop here, it had updates for the sound card, for the touchpad, things like that. That way, you keep everything functional and compatible with your new Windows version, which is of course pretty important. But then for additional drivers like graphics cards, you can either go to the graphics card company website, so either AMD, Intel, or Nvidia, and you can either down download specific for your specific graphics card if you know the hardware that you're working with, or they have auto driver update checker tools as well. Or if you have AMD or Nvidia, both of their software suites that if you install the full software suite, have auto updaters. So for example, NVIDIA's GeForce Experience has a driver update checker, and you can see here, even after updating to Windows 11, it has already kept me up to date on the driver, so I don't actually need to manually install anything. Next up, let's go ahead and check out the taskbar and layout settings. So right-click your taskbar at the bottom and choose taskbar settings. Here, you can choose which icons show up for functionality that they've added into Windows 11, such as search, the task view and virtual desktop view, uh, widgets, things like that. You can also change what icons show up or stay pinned to the system tray, or what they're calling now the, the taskbar overflow, uh, which is a little arrow in the bottom right-hand corner, and you can choose which icons stay up. Now, this is useful for specific programs that have badges that indicate status updates, notifications, message counts, or specific programs that you reference a lot. So for example, uh, if you have Discord or Steam open and you want to regularly continue to see little 
dots or whatever that indicate when you have new messages, you can enable those. Or if you access a program like the Elgato Control Center here to change my lighting settings, then I can go ahead and keep that up so I don't have to click again to get to the arrow and then to the app over and over, which is really handy. You also get access to multiple display settings, so you can have your taskbar show on every display or just on your primary screen. And then of course you can align your taskbar, either keep it centered or align it to the left back like basically every other version of Windows ever. Unfortunately, there's still no setting to actually change which side of the screen the taskbar is on just yet. I believe there's a registry hack for it, but there's not a specific setting for it just yet, which is kind of annoying. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the power and sleep settings. So go to settings, power and battery. Here you get a ton of information if you're on a battery powered computer, such as a laptop or tablet. You get a ton of information about battery consumption, your power over the course of the day, things like that. Here you can change settings for when it turns off your screen, when your PC goes to sleep, things like that. However, if you want to actually change your power plan, that is still locked back in the Windows 7 control panel from back in the day. So close this menu, hit start type in power plan and it will show that as an option open that up it'll open it up in the classic control panel and there you can choose your power plan of course it may have reset this so if you're used to being if you're on a desktop you may want to just set it to ultimate performance or performance uh, so you get the best power out of your components if you're on a laptop you may want to choose battery saver or balanced or whatever to get the best battery life Next up, let's take a look at sign-in options. Here you can enable either a pin sign-in if it reset it for some reason or you just never set it up, or Windows Hello if you are if you have a Windows Hello compatible webcam. The face login is super fast. Uh, the Logitech Brio is one of the more popular ones, or you can enable a fingerprint reader if you have it. Uh, you can control when it asks you to sign back in. So for example, you can disable it from asking you to sign back in after a restart. That's less secure, but it's an option available to you. You can enable apps that relaunch after you restart the computer. So there are specific programs that can kind of remember the state that they were in and launch back up after the fact, kind of like Mac OS. You can turn this on. Um, and then you can also control what shows up on the lock, lock screen for privacy and security concerns. Next up, we want to make a system restore point if you are into having backups and being able to restore your computer where you are. We just upgraded to a fresh install of a Windows version and you may not want to have to go through all of this again uh, if something goes wrong. So you can type in restore in the search bar, choose system restore, or create a system restore point. You can create one for your C drive, which is where your Windows install files and things like that are going to be. Of course, there's a trade-off here of the more usage you set up, the more space it requires on your hard drive, but it preserves more of your system files to keep them intact should you get a virus or, you know, break windows somehow. It happens a lot, unfortunately. Uh, I recommend if you're going to set this up doing between 4 and 10 gigabytes at least, but of course you do need to have the required space in order to do that. Next up, let's check out the new Windows Store. They have the new Microsoft Store available and you can get Android apps in it. So you can install things like TikTok or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, things like that, which is really neat. Go ahead and explore that, see what programs are available for your computer. Despite the fact that they started trying to do this back in like 2012 with Windows 8, they're finally moving to a system where you can get all of your programs, we're not there yet, but they're working there, to where you can get all of your programs for Windows from the Microsoft Store all in one place, which is a bit more secure, and you can keep them auto-updated. So if you know of any apps that you regularly like manually install with installers from their websites and things like that, if you see them listed in the Microsoft Store, it would be worth kind of slowly converting over to the Microsoft Store versions because it'll help you keep them updated and it just generally be an easier, more unified way to get programs, which is pretty cool. If you want to install new programs that aren't in the store, I recommend a, a website called Ninite, which gathers a bunch of open source program installers to kind of install all at once. So you can get things like VLC, Chrome, Steam, all sorts of, you know, installers packaged together without having to navigate to a ton of uh, websites and things like that. It's a program I've used for over a decade now. Highly recommend. Getting a bunch of videos out like this for a specific, you know, launch like Windows 11 is a lot of work and I can't publish them all on the same day so you can actually watch them all at once, which I would like to do, but YouTube's notifications and algorithms and stuff don't really allow for that. That's why I've built my own video streaming site with my creator friends that allow me to not have to deal with a lot of that stuff. The site is called Nebula and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, Thomas Frank, and Lowspec Gamer. My videos are higher quality, they're ad-free and often extended 
separated from the YouTube versions and sometimes significantly earlier when I'm doing a bunch of videos at once like this. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to form an educational documentary power alliance where we worked out a deal with the link in the description below where if you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get access to their library of thousands of educational and documentary titles, but you also get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. They're also offering a 26% off their annual plan deal, making it less than $15 per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which is just kind of bonkers. While you're there, check out Secrets of the Brain to learn about how the brain works and to see a neuroscientist go and study a bunch of unique neurological conditions, which I found really informative and just kind of interesting. Like, we, we focus on education and teaching a lot here, but learning how the brain works is kind of a big meta part of education as well. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and sign up for under $15 per year for both sites. It's crazy. Just do it. Last but not least, but also something you should really consider whether or not you want to do is disk cleanup. Whenever you upgrade Windows versions or install Windows big Windows updates, they kind of reserve basically a system restore point prior to that update just in case something's wrong so you can downgrade. However, this eats up a bunch of disk space and if you're on a solid state drive for your C drive, you probably don't have a ton of it. You can use disk cleanup by typing start and typing in disk cleanup to delete those files, which will clear up a ton of space for you, especially upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. But you want to be sure you want to stay on Windows 11 first, because if you delete these with disk cleanup, you cannot downgrade without just doing a fresh install of Windows 10. So I would give it a week or so, maybe. Make sure that everything's running smoothly, that you don't have any major gripes or any reason you would want to jump back to Windows 10 and then run it because there's kind of no going back after that point, but it will save you quite a bit of space if you want to run it. Let me know how your Windows 11 experience has been going in the comments section below or on our Discord at discord.gg slash epusfox. We will have a playlist going of all the videos that I'm covering, so be sure to hit the subscribe and notification button so you can stay informed. We're going to be covering a lot of Windows 11 stuff here on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, and remember, be kind. Rewind.